Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Tuesday 10 here at Studio Lou, where I take 10 random things out of my box of hoarded papers and we keep on making until we use them up. What I have today, we have this children's book page. I just went past that little paper doll that you probably saw. Then um, this little pattern page, some bunnies. These are children's book pages, this hedgehog, and there's a frog on the back. I love this jumping frog on this children's book page. These upside down houses, um, a collage board, and some cards from the Junk Journal Studio. This is like um, an old page from like an old Sears catalog type book. And this is a big watercolor painting of bleeding hearts. And for those of you who are like, please don't cut up this painting. So um, probably if you've watched me in the past where I cut up these big pieces of art, um, these come from my recycle center. So some days when they just have way too much big framed art, they just give them away or they end up in the, in the heap. So, um, I get them, but I don't have enough wall space for all of this art. I just don't. So instead I just make smaller pieces that I can use in things. So I am going to tear this up into a few different pieces that I'm going to collage on. So just trimming away. I am filming in voiceover mode today, but I'm going to start off a little slow. We'll speed up a little in the middle, but not too fast. And then I'll slow down at the end to talk to you about everything that I make. So just got to trim this up a bit because um, tearing this thick watercolor paper leaves quite a jaggedy kind of ruffly edge and I don't want that. And then we'll cut it into two, probably to make some tags. It's a really pretty painting. It wasn't signed. I don't know who painted it. Sometimes I get signed art. I have found some nice art that actually has been worth some money. Some I've kept and some I've resold and because you can't keep everything as much as I'd like to. <laughs> These leaves are painted really beautifully. The colors are nice and bright. So my reason for filming um, quietly and uh, voice over today is because my little one wasn't feeling well. So she was hanging out with me in uh, the studio and she likes to just kind of curl up on the couch and watch a movie. So I knew I had to get this Tuesday 10 video filmed, but I, I, um, I didn't want the background noise of her. She has a little cough going on. So we're just keeping her cozy. It's funny, like doing a voiceover versus filming live. I feel like there's so much more like um, dead time because I'm not busy doing anything. I'm just watching the video back. <laughs> it's funny the amount of time that we just kind of work on making. But like, I think it doesn't really bother me when I'm I'm making because I'm busy and but also when I'm watching videos I'm totally fine with people just making I don't need them to be like talking about a whole lot else necessarily just do your thing because it's just comfy tv that I have on in the background while and I'm watching it while I'm making or I'm in bed and I'm just kind of getting sleepy and I'm listening to somebody's soothing voice in the evening If you just heard the buzzing of my phone, it's my doorbell. I'm waiting because my girlfriend, Mary Ellen at Red Parrot, so she has me pretty entranced right now with um, magnet fishing. So a few months ago, I guess, or maybe a year ago, my husband got into like being interested in doing magnet fishing and like watching these people on like YouTube pulling like whole bicycles and things out of like a channel, like, you know, using these high powered magnets on a drag rope to kind of drag for metals that are underwater. Um, and so she's been doing 
a bit of this foraging too and she's starting a fun forage friday uh hashtag that i would like to participate in um you know for our foraged things things like rusty bits that we can dye um paper with and make rust water and dye fabric and make marks and those kind of things so i have a magnet arriving today <laughs> because like I, I wasn't all that interested when my husband was talking about it but now I'm like oh I could do this and that and she's been dragging these um industrial ditch kind of places and finding all sorts of fun things like um hardware and other like industrial cast off from construction and trucks and things and sometimes you can find really nice patterns like washers or cogs or even the threading on a screw can leave a really nice mark on fabric so I'm just going around and inking the edges with um, this charcoal eye zinc ink um, on these lovely watercolor pieces. This paper is really thick. It's really nice watercolor paper. But I mean, I'm guessing it's, you know, because it's like a artist quality. Um, so I've got these little laser cuts. This one's not laser cut. This is fussy cut. I can tell by the feet because I did it. Um, <laughs> and it's just this little house sparrow. Just playing around with these flowers and doing a little collage on this one. Let's get this little label all glued down. I love these 49 in market um, bits and bobs of laser cut botanicals and things they're kind of still something that I feel like I'm not going to stop buying because it's like really nice fussy cutting all kind of done for you I know there are like laser scanner kind of like scan and cut and I believe like there are crickets that do this I've thought about looking for a cricket machine that could do this but i get really overwhelmed by anything that feels like there's so many versions of something that do all those different things and i, I just uh, i just get overwhelmed by having to do research it's like an instant pot of crafting like you know there's so many instant pots and they all do different things it's like this one makes yogurt that one you know dehydrates and i feel like it's the same with the cricket brand like this one is a iron and this one prints fabric and this one cuts and like it's just it gets overwhelming for me i just wish that companies would just do more clear simplistic like product releases like the cry cut fabric or the cry cut iron the cry cut paper cutter like <laughs> i just want i don't need a machine that does so many different things either because i think we often end up paying more for something because it has all this functionality built in right like when really what you want is kind of one thing and sometimes it's um financially worthwhile to a company to, to do that but other times it really isn't like i know i um a part of my profession is hardware and um our hardware requires communication types and so people will want to be able to communicate you know Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB, um, you know, other ways. And, you know, each of those things, it adds money because you have to have like um, different parts, like different pieces of machinery, like a Wi-Fi chip or a Bluetooth chip. Um, all those things add cost to the product. So it's like sometimes you end up if you only have one product that like has all the bells and whistles and there's no lower end option available, you end up having to pay that maximum price. Just trying to color the little feet in with some green here, but there's some leftover purpley on my brush. So I'm going to have to clean that off my ink pad. I definitely played around a little more today than I usually do because I was 
watching YouTube while I was making and I think I was just like la 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 like not thinking about how much time I was taking this whole video um, like I'm speeding it up for the purposes of this but the whole video in total I think was like an hour and eight minutes but um, I'm going to go to double speed now so I'm not going too too fast um, this is a paper doll from miles beyond the moon and I just I love her paper dolls they're really fun so I just want to set up a collage on here and uh, add some bits and bobs more of those little laser cuts this little gold label I found a couple bags of those thrifting one day and they're really cute and this is like a little hawk that I've had for quite some time now that's been hanging around in my stash and I'm I want to make him work for this project because he's just been hanging around in my bits and bobs I've been trying to like get my, um, I have this like white plastic basket that has all these little tiny things in it, little labels and cutouts and odds and ends. And I've been trying to keep that beside me while I'm working on Tuesday 10 because it's, it's like allowing me to add some extra elements to my collages when I'm doing this kind of work. And also it's using them up because I love having this stuff like in baskets available to me to work with. But when those baskets get too full, then it's kind of a pain. And I end up having like um, extra, um, you know, baskets of things that I don't want to have. <laughs> and I don't like creating that second basket of something because I already have one and it's full. But like you end up having so many things left over from projects and I'm like <laughs> trying to be more conscientious of like, only you know kind of cutting and printing what I need for a project but like sometimes I can't help it I have to like sit and do my fussy cutting in the car or something like that because part of my journey as an artist here who's making YouTube videos is trying to find like balance um, so that I can be as productive as possible and bring videos to you and get journals made and um, you know um, do do other parts of my business as well as like my the rest of my life parts <laughs> um, so I tend to try to use up a lot of my my spare time but like that way of working might sound stressful to some people but actually it's exactly how my brain works I've I've just got this I don't know um, I have a problem with like not doing anything ever like I don't like my, people have always said to me like you don't know how to relax and it's not that I do know how to relax like I think I just find my way of relaxing is a little different than other people's and that's okay like some of us need to fully stop and just fully don't do anything I feel like I just like having my hands busy and I think it kind of comes from um maybe how I grew up like my dad is that way my grandmother was that way like just having something in your hands like knitting or something when you're watching a movie I think I was kind of always like that and also growing up I didn't spend a lot of time in front of like tv or whatnot like because I was mainly outside all the time so like I just was overly busy I'm so happy to be using some of these bird fussy cuts because I just bought um, like two more bird books in my last thrift haul, I think. And I was like, oh, these birds. But like I looked at my fussy cut bird bag that I keep and there's not that many in there. I've decided I'm going to start like I had started this project with fussy cutting where I was cutting things out and I was putting them in bags and they were like topics like, you know, fish, insects, birds, you know, whatever. But I've actually decided I'm not really going to do that anymore. I don't think I might try to just keep the ephemera folders that are on my desk and then keep everything else in the actual book. I don't know. It seems like easier to be able to like look at because like I have a decently organized library of books and it feels easier to just look at my bookshelves and be like, OK, there's a bird book. And I, I kind of I don't have it all sorted by topic or anything, but I can see all the book spines. And so it's not too hard to look up at my my bookshelves and like pretty much find what I'm looking for. Although I still have probably too many books for sure. Um. 
not a new, not a new problem. <laughs> not a problem that's out of control though. Cause like they are all on the shelves. It's not like I have stacks of book all over the floor or anything. I don't thankfully. Another little 49 and market laser cut. It's best to try to keep these connected um, on the paper that they come on until you use them though because some of the stems are so tiny and I tend to toss them in my little bits basket and thankfully this one didn't tear but I think it was close to it but I was gentle. So this painting has made a really great background right for these birds. Just do some collaging with this label. Bit of scruffy book spine because what is life without scruffy book spine? Finish gluing down these labels here. I don't know where this number label came from. It's somebody's digital. Sometimes I print digitals and then I have a few things left over and once they end up in that basket, there's no identifying where they come from. <laughs> So now it's time to figure out what to do with this stitched on collage board. Um, so I'm just going to cut it down into four pieces. And I've been thinking lately a little bit about making like um, a list of the different kinds of ephemera that I want to make when I'm doing this. So I'm not just making tag, journal card, tag, journal card, right? So like little file folders. I'm probably going to do that. I think I started a list a while ago, like of just all the different things that, you know, I like to make. I mean, I do tend to make different kinds of stuff when I'm doing this anyways, but I think it would be helpful to just have like a little reference point so that when I look at a piece of paper, like usually when I have a piece of paper in my hand, I know based on how big it is or whatever's on it, like what, what would serve it best. But it'd be nice to have a little reference point because then you've got more options. Like, you know, maybe you were thinking you'd make a journal card, but then you're like, oh wait, no, what about making a, you know, a covered notepad or something? I think I haven't made little file folders really ever before in Tuesday 10. I guess it's just because my mind's been working like a little differently. So we have four of them and I like the cohesive colors of that collage board. It's nice making collage boards and then stitching on them like this. Makes for nice like paper for all sorts of things. Great backgrounds. So I also have these labels. This was from a Stamperia collection, um, a vintage library. And so I want to use some of these labels on these little file folders because I think they'll add some writing space and it's also like a cute little addition. Vintage library was a really pretty collection. I ended up using it in a journal that I made that was called like the girl wanted. And I kind of modified it to be like more books. So it was like, the girl wanted more books and it was like I put a children's story so I made like a storybook journal and I put it inside of a vintage book um, and it ended up turning out really nice. Probably going to start another storybook journal soon. I'm getting started on um, another journal right now. I haven't showed it to you guys yet, but I probably will. I just did some work on it. If you follow me on, on Studio Lou on um, Instagram, I have a broadcast channel called like Random Bleeps and Bloops of Creativity. <laughs> so if you go to my Instagram account and you look sort of on the main page, you'll see there like broadcast channel, Random Bleeps and Bloops. Um, if you 
join that channel, you'll see my little things that I share. I usually share like sort of uh, if I'm working on something, but I haven't shared it on YouTube yet, I'll share it there uh, or I'll share it in my chat on um, Patreon a little bit. I, not a whole lot yet because Patreon has made the chat room kind of weird. The way that they've set up chats is very weird. I can't share video. I can like a little videos, uh, like a reel. I can only share like pictures and words. So I, I'm debating whether or not I want to use that. So I'm using Instagram primarily for that kind of content. I'm just inking around this paper doll of mine. This is one of my chestnut dolls. I'm inking around it in gray to make it match the background of this children's book. I just love the little, this little toy sitting on the bed is exactly why I kept that piece of paper because it's just so cute. It was a really cute book, kind of, um, kind of grim though. It was sort of about like, um, you know, almost like the, it was kind of almost like the movie Wally -E, where like, not, not so detailed, but like basically there was only one plant kind of left in the world and they had to like keep it alive to try to like bring vegetation back or something. And it was about like a dream that this boy had to, you know, make the world a better place. It was really nice, but also kind of sad in that realistic way of how, how life goes sometimes. I was just folding it to see if it'd be a cute envelope, but I think what I want to do with this is just leave a little of this packaging paper on the edge and it would be like a nice, um, big kind of clip on into a larger book type journal card. Even a flip out would be good. So I'm looking at this paper doll um, from the It Capilli Imaginarium shop on Etsy and I'm like overwhelmed with all these pieces that I don't really feel like I have a use for at the moment. So I'm just going to focus on using only this moth um, and doing something with this moth body. This paper doll collection was kind of like there's some things in it that are very diverse that you can use for anything really, but um, I felt like I didn't have anything in mind for the rest of those pieces. So now this pattern page, I'm sort of looking at it and thinking, would it be a nice background? But I think it's kind of busy. So I'm just trimming it down into like essentially a tag or a journal card kind of size. And I'm going to cut out one of these little paper dolls from this Sears Roebuck catalog. Sorry, I'm off camera. Sometimes I need to cut up close to myself. Then I decide the whole thing's too busy. So I'm like going to just grab this scrap. This is from uh, my, my, um, one of my kits on, on Etsy. It's my nature phenology kit. And I've decided it's an extra print. So I'm just going to paste this down on the white side and then I'll create an envelope with it that will have a bit of like blue sky on the background that will be visible in the flap of the envelope. So you won't see the words, you'll just see that little bit there. I'm just doing a little bit of trimming. I'm looking at the next thing. What's the next thing that I need to do? <laughs> I've got these cards. These are from the Junk Journal Studio and they're really pretty. So I think I'm going to use a butterfly and just cut it out and give kind of a focal point to that envelope because again, it's just a really busy pattern. It's got all these different patterns and I think like it's nice to have a hint of the colors in the background, but something like that kind of gives a little more control. So it makes it a nicer looking piece. And um, even on the back, I probably find it a little too busy. 
So I'm just going to cut another one of those Stamperia labels out. There's like a smaller collection of them and I'll add one of those on the back to give a little writing space but also just cover the words and break up the busy busyness of the pattern a little bit. This is where I'm thinking about what do I do next? <laughs> it's funny to watch yourself as you're working. digging in my scraps right now looking for the right thing to um, use with these paper girls Tim Holtz some Tim Holtz paper I really wish that Tim Holtz still made 12 by 12 paper I like these. I do. I, and I use them. I just, I would like bigger collections of paper. I like the 12 by 12 because you can fold them and use them as a journal page. These ones are just, you know, you're, you're limited to essentially ephemera making unless you, um, attach them together with like washi or masking tape to make pages. Which is okay, except that sometimes you lose the pattern outline or you just, you don't want to do that with the piece of paper that you have. But I do think that this nice kind of pink envoy, envoy, what is an envoy, invoice, <laughs> will look nice um, in the background of this doll. She's got like one of those little tiny, like, toys on a leash that look like a lamb usually made in Germany um, trying to remember the name of the company that makes them I have a few of them so I'm gonna add those wings that we cut out earlier just behind her there it's like a little little mothy fairy type wing might be able to use this piece in my moth journal that I'm working on the end-to-end -end moth journal as I'm recording this I'm thinking I probably should make another video on that real soon I have so many projects I'm working on right now and so many more that I want to do <laughs> things I'm planning But I'm not doing Mass Make March this year. I'm, I've decided I don't want to do that. Um, I had fun doing it last year. I certainly loved doing it. And I love that my friends followed along and we had a good time. Um, but I've decided that this year I, you know, after Defemember and then Junk Journal January, I sort of felt like, okay, I'm done with these daily prompts um, for now. But I have some fun things coming up. I will be doing um, something that I can't talk about yet, but soon in uh, the month of March. And then I'm doing something. I'm actually doing something in February, too. Um, and I'm doing something a little bigger in April. And then something that's going to be crazy in May. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. And beyond that, I don't have a lot of plans. I'm sort of hoping to keep my time like free for a little while of like, I definitely don't want to do anything too, too much daily. I'm enjoying weekly things. Like I haven't been doing videos on my Ann Brooke uh, 52 flags, but I've been making them each week. And then I'm, I'm going to update like and do the Sunday share videos when I can. It may not be every Sunday, but it will probably be at least every second Sunday. This past Sunday, I, I was going to do um, one because I had completed two journals, but one sold. And then I figured, you know, I had to do a flip through for one anyways. Um, and then I I did have some new I have some new beautiful papers in the shop that are fractal rose and cotton candy lace um, and I could have shown you those I also have a bunch of hand spun yarn that I'm packaging up soon to go into the shop but like I just sort of felt like I wasn't quite ready I wasn't there and I also didn't have anything external to just my shop update to share because um, I just haven't had time to sort of look at what's going on out there I saved a bunch of like sort of make-along type things that are going on 
<laughs> and I've got them like screenshots on my phone and I was going to like share them, but I just, it's been a busy, busy time. So, you know, sometimes you wish you could share a lot more than what you do, but let's dig into these children's book pages now. So I am going to uh, cut this down to just capture that cute little jumping frog um, because He's so cute and I love the toadstools. I'm going to get rid of the little rat. I don't think I need the rat. So we'll just make a little tiny cut. Put him aside. And then for the hedgehog, I'm just going to cut around him quick. Sorry if I'm off camera. There he is. And then the bunnies, we're going to do the same thing. Just cut around them. And then these houses. So I like this uh, children's illustration with those houses. You'll see soon after I cut out this rabbit. Um, the houses are like upside down on the ground and people use ladders to climb into them. It's a really fascinating image. So I'm just going to fussy cut kind of around the hedgehog. And I just want to make a little freeform journal card that is hedgehog shaped. And I've got this folder left over. I'll use that for backing on all these little bits and bobs that I've been cutting out. It's gluing everything down with glue stick. I think I'm going to spend the rest of today after I do this video. I think I'm going to have a little nap. I never take naps, but I was awake all night with my daughter she wasn't feeling good and you know it's funny you look back at your own childhood and you remember when you weren't feeling good and like you know I think we've all had varying experiences with what that was like and who who we depended on at times like that who gave you the best comfort and how and I've just become such a person like obsessed with my children's comfort like I just want to do every little thing for them because I know how bad it feels to feel crummy you know I was sick a lot as a child because my parents were smokers and it had a really um detrimental effect on my health I, I lived many years with tonsillitis until I had no more tonsils and the doctor told me that they were essentially all scar tissue and they removed them and I had asthma, same, same trigger. I don't have asthma as an adult. It was all a smoking related trigger. Um, so yeah, I know what it was to like, just be not feeling good. And thankfully my daughter doesn't have anything really bad. She just had sort of a 24 hour stomach bug, but, um, she's had this little cough for a while that we've been monitoring and, um, I'm just worried it could be a little bit of a bronchitis that's hanging on there because I get bronchitis sometimes and you know it's almost just like like pneumonia can be the same thing I think they call it like walking pneumonia where it's not really bad but it's just like this you know constant kind of like flemminess that you get like she's experiencing a bit of that so um we have kicked things up a notch with their doctor to just kind of investigate what's going on and done a a swab and things like that and um we're going to be having her checked out and she's got some medicine coming and she's had a a chest x-ray to just you know double double check because for coughs that linger around like that sometimes they do become a new condition that like you have to medicate in a different way like antibiotics don't cover it but i was telling my doctor like it's been hard to um sort this out because every time I think I'm going to bring her in like it's not that bad but then like it gets a little worse but then she catches something else so like two weeks ago she caught like tonsillitis and then I I noticed after she finished the antibiotics for that that the cough started to kind of come back a little bit more but it wasn't that bad but then it amped up again over the last couple of days like it's mainly at night when she's coughing kind of like a post nasal drip type thing and <laughs> 
And so, you know, I feel bad giving her like cough suppressant. I don't want to do that every night. So I was going to take her in. And then we went to the mall um, to have a day of like doing art and doing homework and that kind of thing. We just kind of make a fun afternoon of it. And we're not around a lot of people and we're still masking in public, like unless we're in a secluded kind of space, like sitting down at a table somewhere alone or something. Um, but she started to feel like she had a bit of tummy upset. So she had like a 24 hour tummy bug type thing. Um, so that I'm like, again, stuck, like, how do I address this chest thing? And so I had a doctor's appointment that was already scheduled for myself today for just a regular follow up. And I just brought her with me and I explained the whole thing. And my doctor was so good. Um, she's like, let's just try to sort all of this out. So she wasn't worried about the tummy bug because she said, yeah, yeah, that's going around. Um, <laughs> and it's gone now. There's been no symptoms today. So she's like, but let's try to figure out the coughing thing. So I took her for a quick x-ray today and um, she was really good about it. And so she gets to have a day of rest today and she'll probably be back to school tomorrow, depending on how she feels. So this is just old ledger paper. Um, and I am using, um, so I played with these papers on my jelly pr for jelly printing and making like, um, negative space kind of templates out of just book pages to use when you're jelly printing to get different marks. And these were the leftover pieces from that. And I just love the greens and yellows. So I'm just going to glue them on top of this, uh, green, um, ledger paper. And then I'm going to cut them into two pockets. And like, I like that they're kind of wacky because the upside down houses are kind of wacky too. So we'll just put the houses on these two pockets. And I think they'd look really cute in either like a storybook journal or like, you know, kind of a whimsical nature journal or some other storytelling kind of journal. little upside down house. I'll just trim the top corners to give them a nice shape for like a bottom tucky type pocket. So we still have no snow. It's been a very strange February. My um one of our friends, well, he's, he's one of our beaver leaders in our, in our local scouting group, him and his son built an igloo to sleep in this year. And it was miraculous because we've had almost no snow this year. So he was excited to get to do that. So here we go with, um, all of the finished pieces. So here are all those tags from that big painting. So I think we got six of those in total, tags and journal cards. And I love how they look. And then four file folders. So if you have a, a cheap or easy source for big paintings, like consider that a great material. And then this big fun journal card. And a little envelope. I didn't do a lot of stitching today. And the little moth bit and um, a little bug journal card and then the children's book bits I love the little tag with the frog and our house our, I had to remember they were upside down houses and these little bits so I made 20 pieces today thank you for hanging out with me have a great day